back to an instant reaction edition of the Night Report podcast. I'm your host, Mike Broadbent. Joining me once again is my co-host, Richie Schneiderite. Yo. Richie, we picked up another commitment for the basketball program. We have our backup big man for this upcoming season to go along with Cliff O'Marui and uh, Antoine Wolfolk. Uh, mm-hmm. Emmanuel Ogbole from uh, Monroe uh, Community College in New Jersey. He's originally from Nigeria. We kind of highlighted him on a past podcast, but tell us a little bit about his game and how this commitment came together. Yeah, um, I guess we'll just start from the beginning. 6'10", 245-ish, 242 technically is what he's listed at. Um, so he's only been playing basketball since 2018. So he's, he's very raw. He's new to the game. But, man, is he fucking huge. 6'10", 242, like I said, but a 7'6 wingspan. I sent you the picture the other day, and it's, his yeah. arms are just fucking freaky long. And <laughs> he's, he's got hardly any fat on him too he's a very yeah. very cut dude he's he looks he looks the part for sure yeah no i think he's actually gonna be a sneaky good get by pike on crew so they offered him back in i wrote an article on it I forget when it was i think it was november um january blah, 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 december they offered him in in december we did an article with him we talked to him uh talked about his Rutgers offer blah 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 all that good stuff so he actually came over from Nigeria where, like I said before, he just started playing the game of basketball in 2018. He's been working with educational basketball. is It's one of their uh, premier select groups over there. Um, they've produced quite a few uh, notable football and basketball players over the past couple of years. So like you might, some of you might remember um, top Rutgers big man target, Ruben Chinello, who ended up choosing uh, Washington State in the end. He was working with this program. Actually, he was <laughs> – I'll have an article out on the, on a – with these guys soon, the coaching staff over there. But uh, he literally was working with them the day of when I gave them a call. And uh, very hard to get in touch with people from Nigeria. You got to go through WhatsApp and all that. It was it was, it was was a little tough, but we got on the phone. It worked out. So, But these guys have produced a ton of guys, and they've produced a ton of NFL players too. They started dipping into the football back in 2021, and they've already produced Jason Godrick, who's with the Chiefs currently, Kenneth uh, – I'm going to pronounce this wrong – Adam Wegu, Adam Wegu with the Packers currently and um, Emmanuel Okoy, who actually was a hoops player over in uh, Nigeria, but he, when he went there, he was working out for hoops and they just, these guys are from uh, the two coaches over there are from, let me see if I can find a name. All the Toby out of Toppin and his brother, uh, Isi Lupo out of Toppin from educational basketball. They actually lived in Asbury park at one point They lived in Kearney, New Jersey. So they're, they're, they, they know the States very well. They know the game of football. So they picked up this, this kid who was like uh, a hoops player in Emmanuel Okoy, who's a 2023 kid. And they picked, and he literally just started playing football with them and started training football. And he ended up being a 5.6, three star signing with Tennessee. That was a loud horn. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, uh, it's 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 interesting how like they've, they've trained these guys and he ended up having 20 plus offers when it's all said and done and emmanuel ogbo actually was suggested to them from david agoha agoha who's with the las vegas raiders currently he ended up finding uh he suggested it to him he's from the same town as uh emmanuel and he said to the guys he's like hey i know this kid emmanuel is really big would love to get him in one of your guys like training sessions they were like two hours away they ended up meeting up with him, and he's just – they were amazed by his size and figured, that, hey, we can make you into a really good player. Sent him over to Juco in the States, and here he is. He's got Rutgers and Seton Hall with Rutgers on top now. That was a long, long, uh, long talking point. <laughs> uh, you're mute, Mike. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> we'll edit that out. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, sorry about that. Um, so obviously, a lot of good info there. Um, this is also a guy we kind of highlighted in a past episode. You know, he played one year of junior college, and he averaged 12 points a game and eight rebounds a game. Do you see this? Do you see uh, Agbole as a guy who's going to come in and be the primary backup big man this year? I think he might beat out Wolfolk. Um, I think he has a different skill set than Wolfolk. Wolfolk's a little smaller, a little bit more athletic, whereas this kid's just a straight defender. Like, he is nasty on defense. Now, do I think he's going to hack a ton because he's raw? Yeah, that's just how it works pretty much for the most part. Yep. Um, Think of early stage Cliff where he was just a hack machine, and he might have only had three, four fouls a game. My man had, like, 12 hacks a game. (laughs) Like, so... (laughs) Yeah, it's it's similar to that, but he's a really good defender. He's got a good nose for the ball. Um, he's not afraid to go up for, for against anyone for the most part. 
Um, he's a really a catch and he's like a post presence for the most part. He's a great rim protector. Um, I, I, I know he had a, tw- he played, who was it? Lackawanna community college. Who a lot of people know of a uh, big football feeder program over in Pennsylvania. And he had like 25 points and like 14 rebounds. Wow. Um, so he's not like, he's not afraid of the contact. He's pretty good at that. Uh, his shooting percentage was, was really good. He ended up at 69.3%, which is phenomenal, wow. honestly. Um, but he doesn't really have anything other than the block. That's pretty much it. That's his bread and butter. He's going to be good with putbacks. He's going to be good with posting people maybe a little bit. Not a ton of post moves. Um, but he's he's got a ton of blocks per game. He averages like over two blocks per game. I think it's 2.7 when I was looking at it. I had to go back and double check and do the math again. I'm like, oh shit, what's two point seven? I'm like, wow, that's impressive. But uh, yeah, no, he's he's a really good, uh, really good underrated player, I would say, because he's also got three years, not your typical JUCO. So yeah, yeah. And then uh, you you dip back into Nigeria again, where you get another uh, Nigerian prospect, and he's gonna go overseas with the team, and that's a great bonding trip for him. He's gonna get to meet the team, kind of work with them a little bit more. Um, this, this is, this is huge for Rutgers. He had a game with seven offensive rebounds at one point. So, I mean, this, this is, I like this kid really. I think he's really underrated and I think Rutgers ended up finding him in kind of not in the middle of nowhere, but like it was kind of like a last second effort and they found him. Seton Hall got a word of him. They offered immediately. I think if this kid had any type of exposure on social media, he'd be a double digit offer kid by far. So this, this is a good gift for Rutgers. Yeah, no, this is awesome, and this is a much needed addition to the roster for next year. Mm-hmm. This uh, puts them at three scholarships that are going to be open for the next season. Correct. How do you see those three scholarships getting filled? Do you have any names in mind, or is the staff just playing this pretty close to the best right now? They're, it's like locked down over there. He, I mean, I don't blame him after everything that's happened over the past like month, <laughs> month and a half. I mean, not even a month and a half. I guess it was it was less than a month technically when you lost your yep. starting guards. <laughs> um, yep. But, uh, yeah, another plane is super close to Vest. Uh, just kind of similar to what they did with the assistant coach thing. Like, no one saw Marlon Williamson coming out of nowhere for the most part. Sure. Um, and so, I mean, I, I got a couple names. Jersey Ties and Noah Farrakhan, Luther Muhammad, Adam Silas. Those are three guards. I know they want a guard really bad. So that's going to be number one. Um, would it be a starting guard? I think you could sell the idea of a starter, but I do think Derek Simpson might be your starter too. Um but I mean, if you get a good score, it's it's whatever you can you can throw yep. him in there. Um, they also want a forward slash wing type player, so like a three four guy, kind of in a similar mold of Mawat Mag, someone that could just step up until Mag really comes back for the most part, and then kind of shift to the bench and still provide quality minutes, provide depth, provide maybe even scoring because you, you need some more scoring. In my you never have enough scoring actually, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I, I don't really have any names at the moment other than the three I just said from Jersey. And I, I'm only listing them because they have Jersey ties because that's it's a thing. Um, other than that, though, it's it's very, very quiet. Uh, Pike and crew are keeping everything on lock. They got their backup big man now, so just kind of wait and see. And then uh, I I can't state it enough. I like this kid a lot. Whether um, him or yeah. Wolfolk um, – ends up being the starter next year because Cliff's not Cliff has a year again, technically, but he's not coming back next year. Um, I'd be very, 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 very surprised if he came yeah. back next year as well. Yeah. Let these two develop, let them battle it out. Competition is, is the best way to fucking develop guys for the most part. I and mean, it brings out the best in people. So I think either, if either of them win, to be honest, it could be a, could be a, one of those is probably going to be the starting center for 2024 with Dylan Harper and Ace Bailey. Yeah. Um, it's a very, very big pickup here, um, in Ogbele, TBD as to how the roster will round out and it could be high yeah. school kids. It could be transfer portal kids. I think portal for the most part. Yeah, it probably will be. Um, but <clears> one area we know that it probably will not be is, uh, with guys, um, uh, reclassifying. We already talked about that though, in a couple different podcasts, but I want to reiterate it. Um, Although we have a commitment from Ace Bailey, who's one of the top players in 24, and three, two other top uh, players, or I guess one other right now, soon to be two others, soon to be three others. But anyway, um, <laughs> it's just not looking like any of those guys are going to reclassify. So the reinforcements are going to have to come either from the class of 2023, or more likely they'll be coming from 
the transfer portal. Yeah, um, we, we can reiterate that as many times as we want, and people are still going to find a way to forget it. But uh, the Ace Bailey is not reclassifying. I know Bleacher Report posted some stupid shit when Simeon Wilcher did. Oh, uh, Simeon Wilcher? No. Who reclassified? Oh, Cadell. you could do. Yep. Cadell. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, shut that one down right then and there. That That's not happening. Um that's pretty much it. Uh, Simeon Wiltshire also, by the way, I, we could shut that one down too if you really want. Um, guys, it, it ain't happening. It's not Rutgers bound. I know he's a Jersey kid. I know whatever you want to say. His brother plays in the Big Ten, blah, blah, blah. I've heard Nebraska talked about for him a little bit, but not really much at all. Um, it's going to be uh, St. John's for the most part, it sounds like. Slick Rick, Slick Rick is just – he's a good coach. He's not even a good coach. He's a great recruiter. And that's the end of the game. That, that end of the day, that is the name of the game. That's what I'm trying to say. Jeez, I'm struggling here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if, if even if you recruit a whole lot of four stars, you're probably still going to be a tournament team, to be honest with you. You mm-hmm. just let them kind of rock and let them do whatever they want. One of them is going to shine, you would hope. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, you would hope. Yeah, so. Not, I wouldn't. I wouldn't fear too much. We're having an article coming out later this week from our from our guy Mark Remza, our, our Rutgers hoops insider on Twitter. Um, basically, calming the public, calm the panic. Like, there's this team's still going to be damn good. Want Mag's going to come back healthy eventually, maybe December. Um, Andre Hyatt is going to have to step up a little bit, which is fine. Noah Fernandes is a really good point guard, a really good scoring guard. Derek Simpson kind of came into his own right in the later in the half of the season. Uh, Gavin Griffiths is great. He's going to be a phenomenal player. I think he probably starts the, the three, actually, at this point. Um, Antonio Chole got a lot of rave reviews from guys last year. I think he's going to step up and play some significant minutes. Um, and then you got Quiff. You got Quiff back. And that's yep. – the fact that you have Quiff back and you add it for Nandies tells me right then and there that this team has a chance at the tournament. Let's see what they can do. It's going to be a totally different team, totally different offense, totally different, like – tempo completely i think they were like bottom tier in tempo when it comes uh last year i think ken palm had a bottom tier um which yeah like you don't want to be there <laughs> um yeah yep so yeah I, th- I think they're gonna be really good this year i think it'll be a completely different team and i think we'll have more fun watching them too because i don't want to say it was boring last year but like if you don't like defense you're not gonna like watching Rutgers basketball now this year they're no. still gonna play defense but I think it's going to be a fast-paced fucking team. They were ranked three fifty-fifth in tempo last year. Wow. That's disgusting. That's bottom ten. So I think there's three sixty-three teams in uh, uh, D1. Th- yep. Yeah, and and one of them is, a, and that's on the schedule. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So that'll be fun. <laughs> oh man. Well, you know, if you're going to schedule a bad team, might as well schedule the worst team in Division One. Might as yeah, well not. I think that's right. Oh, uh, and anyway, all right, guys. Well, uh, this one is a bit of a shorter pod. Uh, did you have anything else you wanted to hit on before we sign off here? Yeah, we could talk schedule real quick just because, uh, yeah, I kind, so- kind of released it, not released it. Um, so this is all I want to preface this by saying this is all Richard Kent's hard work and findings. Uh, Richard Kent is a uh, resident hoops uh, insider. Uh, we'll probably have him on the pod again soon. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, right now, well, not the greatest looking schedule. You got Wagner, 313. Uh, Boston University, 266. Like, yeah. St. Peter's, 308. Long Island, 363. 331, Stonehill. Seton Hall, great game. Wake Forest, pretty good game. Georgetown, they're 219 last year, but they'll be better. So good game. I like that. Um, and then we got two opponent to be determined. Two neutral sites we're hearing. Neutral site number one, Barclays Center. Pike kind of revealed it, let it, let it out of the cat out of the bag. I don't think he would say it unless I know contracts haven't been signed yet, but I don't think he would say that on record, on video, on social media, unless something was like a guarantee. Now, from what we were told, it's a Big 12 team coming to the Barclays Center. It will be a neutral site game. So everyone that's like, oh, it's Rutgers home game. They're fucking, they're, they fucked us again. Fuck the net. Um, no, it will be a neutral site game. So don't even worry about that. Um, I don't know what the Big 12 team is going to be, though. That's the interesting part. It could be – there's actually a lot of good options. Big 12, in my opinion, best basketball conference last year by far. Past couple of years, maybe. Um, so that's interesting. And then um, 
They're also going to have, they're working on a neutral site game. It's working versus a Pac-12 team in Pac-12 country. Now, I don't even know if there's a Pac-12 team in that state. So there's your little your little hint there, right? I don't think there is, right? No, but I believe that it borders at least three states that do have a Pac-12 school, at least one Pac-12 member school. That'll give you even more. Uh, I should basically hone it into one specific area at this point. Yeah, so... Anyway, that's uh, that's really all I got. Uh, I got a phone call real quick. Um, so you want you want to wrap this up, and I'll uh, take this phone call. It could be interesting. Yeah, no. Uh, thanks, thanks once again for joining, guys. This has been another edition of the Night Report podcast. Signing off.